Okay, FAQ number 104. How often should a Christian repent? Well, uh, as often as you sin. Uh, 1 John chapter 1. Um, let's see, where do I want to start here? We'll start at verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Okay, so past, present, future sins are all forgiven. Right? Sure. You don't have to get resaved every single time that you sin. You'd have to be getting resaved every day, you know, multiple times throughout the day. Uh, that's not what it's talking about here. Jesus' blood has cleansed your sins. You've been they've been paid for. Right? Past, present, and future. And again, that doesn't mean that you can live in perpetual sin because God will chasten you if you do. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So you can't say, well, I'm saved, now I'm sinless. That's what true lordship salvation is. Again, these liars, these easy believism liars, try to say repentance and faith and repentance as part of salvation is somehow lordship salvation. I know it isn't. Lordship salvation is saying that Jesus is Lord of your life and you no longer sin. All right, uh, You're living a life of holiness, perpetual holiness, and, and keeping yourself saved. and That's Lordship salvation. Don't believe these people that say Lordship salvation is coming to God broken in repentance and then having a changed life afterwards. Okay, Your changed life doesn't mean that you don't sin. Okay, You're still going to sin. Verse 8 proves that. But what happens when you do sin? Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Like Lordship Salvation people are. Okay, Again, teaching that you uh, should have a changed life, that's not saying that you're going to be sinlessly perfect. Right? Sinless perfection after salvation, that's Lordship Salvation. And I've never taught that. So don't believe these liars that, that claim I'm teaching Lordship Salvation, because I'm not. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, um, verse 31 says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. So your job as a Christian is to judge yourself, to live in self-judgment. And what do you do when you find that there's something wrong? You repent. And, you know, people try to define repentance with one definition. They'll say it means change of mind. Others will say, no, it means a turning from sin. Others will say, no, it means a, you know, it means all those things, okay? If I, just to give you a little scenario here, if I just make a mistake and I see some scantily clad, filthy woman on online someplace and I'm like, click and I click on it and I go ow oh, why did I do that that's looking with lust it's 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 setting wicked things before my eyes and and uh, man I messed up there now what do I do well I change my mind I say I should not have done that that was a bad thing to do and I also turn from that I don't say well I've changed my mind I'm still gonna leave the picture up but I know that it was wrong for me to do that well no get rid of the picture you see all right you change your mind, you turn, you change direction, your actions change, you know. You say, I'm not going to do that again. You don't say, well, that was wrong for me to do and I'm going to do it again in five minutes. No, you say, I'm sorry about that, Lord. You confess your sins. You're judging yourself. You say, Lord, I'm so filthy. I'm just such a wicked sinner. You know, that's what you do. Romans chapter 7. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You know, Paul says, you know, the good thing that I would do that, that's, you know, I don't do that. The bad thing that I shouldn't do, that's what I'm doing, you know, to paraphrase. You know, the Christian life is life of repentance. I'll show you one other verse here quickly. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A living sacrifice. Okay, when you sacrifice an animal, it is not living for very long. But you see, when you sacrifice your life to the Lord, it's the entire time from your salvation until He takes you home. 
be it through the rapture, when you go up, called up to meet the Lord in the air as a living saint, or if you die and you get caught up that way. But that point is, that life as a Christian is a living sacrifice. It's a life of repentance. It's a continual life of, of the Lord says, what about that CD over there that you've had for years and years and years? Oh, that one? Well, I didn't think there was really anything wrong with it. The Lord says, what about that one song that's on there? Is that in line with my word? No, it's not. It's not in line with your word. The Lord says, okay, why don't you get rid of it? Okay, I'll get rid of it. You get rid of it. You know, you look at something wrong or you say something wrong or you, you don't read the Bible for a while and you start to kind of get messed up and things. Repent. Repent. Stop what you're doing. Uh, how often should you repent? Uh, every time you sin, every time you mess up, you want to stay in fellowship with God. All right? You get out of fellowship with God, anything can happen to you. You get really, really messed up. But as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 there, um, when you don't judge yourself, the Lord's going to have to chasten you. And you don't want His correction. You don't want His chastening. All right? Do your own chastening. Do your own repentance. Okay?